so using settings and date we can now grab the date that the user's passed so now that the options are out the way we want to go ahead and actually create or outline the function that we're going to be running every second uh, which I'm going to call count execution uh, so function count execution and this will be our function that uh, essentially um, takes the date and makes a calculation from it um, and works out everything basically and places that inside of the div so this is going to run every one second and because we want it to run every one second down here a bit later on uh, we're going to be creating an interval so um, what I want to do is just before I do anything here is go ahead and take the this selector and apply it into its own variable so I can use it uh, globally so I'm going to say var this underscore cell or just get rid of that there equals this so that's basically my this selector uh, remember later on we're going to need to change this dot days dot hours dot mins dot seconds for uh, for each uh, value and what we're going to do inside of this function which we're just going to go ahead and execute down here is we're going to convert the date that we've supplied as a string into um, a timestamp so I'm going to set a variable called event date and this is going to be equal to date dot pass and in here I just want to supply the string which remember is settings date now I want to divide this by a thousand uh, and the reason for this is that um, it will give us it in, in milliseconds and we don't want it in milliseconds we just want it in seconds uh, by all means if you're creating a counter with milliseconds then this would be fine uh, but in this example we're using seconds so what I want to do is now go ahead and uh, let's just go and alert that out so uh, let's yeah let's just inside of this function alert out event date so we'll see what's been done with our uh, string that's been passed you can see that it's been converted into a timestamp okay so now that we have the timestamp we can go ahead and grab the current date so I'm going to create a new variable called current date and this is going to be equal to um, jQuery or sorry we can use dollar sign dot now and uh, what we want to do is um, that would be with brackets because it's a function uh, divide that by a thousand as well because this will return it in milliseconds and we don't want it in milliseconds we want it in um, in uh, seconds uh, but we want to floor this value so I'm going to go ahead and say math dot floor uh, and that will just floor this uh, value so it will round it to the nearest uh, whole integer so let's go ahead and alert event date and then a space and then current date so we'll see that these two values will differ uh, we've got the event date here and then the current date here now to work out the amount of seconds between the two of them uh, we want to go ahead and create a new variable called seconds and that's going to be obviously the event date so the event date that we've specified minus the current date so this will be sorry not with brackets so this will be the amount of seconds between uh, the current time and the date that we've specified in the settings so pretty uh, simple we now need to go ahead and work out the days and hours and minutes but for each time we do this we need to make sure that the other values will update so for example when seconds gets to zero and then starts counting from 59 uh, we want to make sure oh, sorry no so if days is say one day and we hit um, we you know count down our hours then we need days to change and if the same with minutes if we if minutes gets down to zero we want hours to change if seconds gets down to zero we want minutes to change so we need all these values to be updating uh, it's all well and good grabbing the seconds and you know making the calculations uh, but we need to actually make sure that each um, each time each um, value updates so let's go ahead and do uh, days first let's say days is equal to and I'm just going to pull this over well we'll write it out first uh, we essentially want to take the seconds and div uh, and divide it by 60 times 60 times 24 in order to gain the amount of days we have so that will give us it's just really uh, standard programming knowledge um, and we're going to floor this value as well so I'm going to say math.floor and inside here we want to take the seconds and we want to divide it by 
60 times 60 times 24. So now days represents the, um, in fact, we'll just line all these up. Uh, days now represents the um, amount of days uh, from the seconds. Okay, so uh, we'll go ahead and just alert out days, and you can see that. Uh, let's just refresh. Uh, you can see we've got one, and the date that we actually specified in here is 10th of August. Uh, today it's the 8th of August and I've specified this at 12 p.m. Uh, so it is in fact one day uh, and then it will be something hours. So we now know that this works properly. If I was to go ahead and change this, this to say the 15th of August, when we refresh you can see we've got six days until the 15th because it's the 8th today uh, and then we'll add on a few hours for that. So we know that the days works now. However, what we want to go ahead and do is specify the hours and minutes, but we need to make a calculation of the seconds before we calculate these. 